who it is now. She had 10 knee surgeries. Wow. And I just thought, Good afternoon. Uh, Welcome to day four of the SCORES Soccer Summit. My name is Angela Bailey from America SCORES Bay Area, where we serve over 2,000 young students and partner with 80 different school sites in order to provide free soccer, poetry, and service learning programming for kids. Across the nation, America SCORES is in 12 different cities, partnering with 306 schools, working and training with over a thousand coaches and in service to 12,000 plus young poet athletes, as we call them, poet athletes, because they learn life skills and they express themselves on and off the field. So we're so excited, honored to have everybody with us here today. Special shout out to Alicia Alicia Yano for putting together such a stellar group of leaders in the field who have just been having uh, sharing tons of information and very inspirational for all of us and that's what we expect and know is going to happen today also a big shout out to our two lead sponsors women in soccer and goal five we could not do it without you and this is the way we're going to grow our community so go to womeninsoccer.org sign up to be a member it's free so it's a no-brainer it expands your soccer network And it's just going to help us be active and amplify our voices as a community. They're also doing a session after this one, actually, at 1 p.m. Pacific time today. So definitely sign up for that. Join their launch party. And don't forget to go to Goal 5. Check out their website. It's apparel for her. And it's beautiful. And it's about time, right? (laughs) So also, you might just be the lucky winner because Goal 5 is giving away a prize to one randomly selected attendee every single session. So cross your fingers, it could be you this time. In true scores fashion, I'm going to leave you with a poem. We like to bring the poet athlete's voice into the room here. And so I'm gonna leave you with a poem written by Chelsea, a fifth grader coming out of Powell Elementary in DC scores. Here we go. I care about the community. I care about unity. I know many people don't care and some people just stare. Many people don't have homes without something simple like cones, going days without food and people pass by being rude. Why do we have to be so mean to people who just wanna be seen and need us to create unity in order to build a community? Thank you, Chelsea. And thank you to our panelists that we're about to hear from. And thank you to Alicia for putting it all together. Enjoy. Thanks, Angela. Mm -hmm. Um, I am so excited about this session because the Sports Bra Project is one of the first organizations that I actually reached out to join this summit because I just, just love their mission and love the mission of football for the world. And, um, love what you are all doing. Um, So I am linguistically challenged. So I am going to let these lovely ladies introduce themselves. We have Sarah from the Sports Bra Project, Monica from Football for the World, and Nicole from Huddle. And she's also a volunteer at the University of Illinois. And I'm going to turn it over to Sarah um, to start and letting us know about herself and a little bit about her soccer background and take it from here, Sarah. Hi, thank you, Alicia. We're excited to be here. I love that America Scores is bringing so many in the soccer community together who are working in different areas. And that's truthfully what makes the Sports Bra Project work. Um, we couldn't do it alone, which is where Monica and Nicole being here is great because they're representing sort of a couple of different aspects of what the Sports Bra Project does. So a little bit of my background, um, I'm a Title IX baby. I came up playing through high school and college. Uh, first half of my career was spent coaching college and I've been working in the youth game since then. Uh, I think in all of that time, um, we get to travel, we get to work with people from different areas, uh, we get to see lots of different things within the US and abroad. Uh, and I think through all of that, I realized that there's a lot more opportunities for girls to play than there used to be, but there's still a lot of barriers. And that's where the Sports Bra Project comes in. So um, before we go into a little bit more about what we do, I'll have Monica um, and Tiggs introduce themselves. Uh, Monica and Tiggs and I connected, we'll talk a little bit on social media later, but uh, it plays a huge role in building this network. So. One of you wants to step it up, step up there first. 
I will go next. Hello, everyone. My name is Monica Basilovac. I am the executive director of Football for the World, another nonprofit that uses soccer as a way to improve uh, people's lives all around the world. I also coach uh, at Marion High School, so high school girls team here in town, and I am a board member for the Sports Bra Project. So love that this game brings us together and uh, connected me to all of these different groups and people. And thank you. I already see the love coming in in the chat from Omaha, Nebraska. So we appreciate you. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Tiggs, or uh, people call me by my last name, Tiggs, so you'll hear that. Um, I grew up playing soccer in Chandler, Arizona, and then um, played collegiately at Indiana State, and then went on to um, do some coaching collegiately and overseas in Australia. And I've just kind of let soccer take me um, to wonderful places and, and meet, uh, meet people such as Sarah and Monica and um, continue connecting um, people through the soccer community. So excited to be here. Great. Well, Sarah, why don't you get us started and let us know about the Sports Bra Project and what you are and what you do. Well, did that share screen work there? Are we up? Not yet. Okay. Sorry, I thought we had this. We practiced this one. Um, it's giving me a message. Uh, who can share? I think, let's see. Oh, it let's, no, should be able to, do, let's try it again. All right. There we go. All right, now I think we're good. Okay. So basically the Sports Bra Project in short really is about making sports accessible to everyone. Um, as we talked about, we've seen lots of different things in traveling. I think most of us through soccer have gained a lot of experiences that way. And we know that soccer looks different in New York City than it does in rural Uganda, but the barriers that the girls and women face to playing in those areas are really similar in some regards. Uh, they tend to fall into three areas, cultural, economic, and logistical. Cultural girls simply don't play. It's not part of many cultures or it's still a beginning part. Um, economic, if it's not an integral part of your society and resources are stressed to begin with, you just don't have the funds to whether buy equipment and the sports bar is really just a piece of equipment. Um, and then logistical, believe it or not, uh, Amazon does not deliver to everywhere in the world. So these three pictures are pretty much examples of that. The girls on the left are playing with a program called Futsat in Mexico. Um, the women on the right are in Kenya and they're part of a league of villages that play each other. Most of the women are over 30 and they have over 200 women playing, which is amazing. And in the middle is a group called Free to Run. It's not a soccer program, but they work with uh, girls and women in areas of conflict. So the barriers for each of these women and girls looks di look different, but they do all fall in those same categories. Uh, so what the Sports Bra Project does is we know there's amazing organizations working in these areas, doing great work with sports and education, sports and health, sports and wellness, um, kind of pairing it together. So what we do is we support what they're doing and we support what they're doing by providing that final bit, that final bit of that, that last barrier to entry, which is a sports bra. A lot of times girls, once they get between 11 and 14, it's a lot, you know, that can be a barrier to playing. Um, you're starting to develop and don't have the means or the resources to or even know that there is such a thing as a sports bra. So what we've been able to do is support organizations in these areas that know their demographic, they know they're on the ground there, and we just provide that extra piece, which is sports bras. So we provided 4,000 sports bras to 26 different countries um, and about 30 organizations. Uh, the ones here, again, this is a different group in Mexico. This is one of Monica's groups, Football for the World. Um, to their right is a group, it's a sport, uh, it's a sport club in Kuwait, and this was through a sports diplomacy program in Lisa Berg. The girls on the bottom left are part of the Namibian Football Association's Gals for Goals program. Um, so that's how we, you know, that we address that final barrier for entry. The final picture is kind of where the bras come from, and you see the little notes attached. And this is where we start to get into a little bit of fun with that. And the contributing organizations are getting as much from it as... Uh, the ones receiving it because now we're giving an opportunity for them to start normalizing the conversation of their needs in sports and supporting others 
So here we have uh, Nicole Tiggs's group from Omaha on the upper, upper left corner there. Um, there's a, a women's soccer team in California, a wheelchair basketball team at the University of Illinois. Uh, on the left is a girl, who, a young woman who actually ran a sports bra drive with her soccer team as part of a social justice class she was taking in college. Um, in the middle is a, are two women who are part of San Diego soccer women. And on the right is a field hockey team, uh, a division three field hockey team in the Northeast that did it as a conference drive. So we really want to normalize both the conversation for those athletes that are receiving the bra, that this is a normal part, um, it's a piece of equipment that's you know, just should be part of your equipment ordering, um, but then also the, uh, those that are doing drives are able to have that conversation as well and provide an opportunity to take some leadership in that. So with that, um, so in short, we provide sports bras, which addresses an immediate need. But the bigger picture is really just normalizing women and their needs in sports and not treating women as a special interest. Um, this is really should be, if you're providing sports programming to women and girls, it should be a sports program for women and girls, not just an add-on to the boys program. Um, it should be given equal respect and equal treatment, even if they don't always look identical, but having the same respect there is key. So that said, that should give you a little bit of an idea of what we do. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to, to work with these groups. Um, and the collaboration is really what makes this project work. As, this, as you saw, there's so many organizations involved to make this possible. And Nicole and Monica can talk on that because they've been on different, different areas of this. Um, Nicole's team ran a sports bra collection drive. Um, Monica's organization was the one that distributed it. And we, we've all worked together in some different ways. So I will turn it over to them to let them talk a little bit more about their experiences in it. Oops. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll start off and talk a little bit about how we um, did a bra drive with the Sporting Omaha um, DA team. In all honesty, um, I, I know Sarah was collecting um, bras, still looking for, for bras and um, Monica and I had connected um, over, we, we're still trying to figure out how we exactly connected, but um, <laughs> but uh, Monica and I lived in, in Omaha and are on a organization, um, women in uh, soccer in Nebraska together. And um, we were in conversation that she was heading to Jamaica um, soon and was going to deliver some sports bras. And I was like, oh my gosh, let's do a sports bra drive at, um, with Sporting Omaha. So I, uh, was helping out with the, um, sorry, my dad just started printing stuff. So if, um, you guys hear the printer in the background, that's why. Hey, um, little dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, I spoke with the coaches, uh, the DA coaches, and just uh, okayed it and told the girls what was going on and why we were doing the drive. Um, and they, the next uh, time, they they brought the sports bras and were super excited to um, to hand them off and um, get them to Jamaica. And and kind of a little side story was we were taking pictures of the bras. And um, one of the male coaches that was coaching like U8 boys, we were literally on the side of the field. He um, was shooing us off the field because we were taking pictures with bras. Like it was interrupting his practice, but we weren't interrupting his practice. We weren't even on, you know, where they were practicing. So, um, so it's still an uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable thing to talk about um, in, in a male's world. But um, like I told him, like, we all came from women. So like, you know, it's okay. Like this is what they, they wear to, to play. So, so anyway, so got the, the bras, um, that last picture that you saw of Monica and I, um, we were having a staff game and she came and picked them up. And so we took a picture and, and she got them delivered to, to Jamaica. So yeah, that's, that's my part of the story, Monica. I don't know what else you would like to add. I, I mean, I can pick it up from there. So like Tiggs and Sarah have already said, you know, this takes a really vast network of individuals and individuals that decide to step up and say, hey, I've heard about the sports bra project. I want to get involved. What do I do next? And so it really took Tiggs stepping up and saying, I'm going to do this drive with my, my DA team that are, you know, mostly high school students, 
correct me if I'm wrong, age-wise. So um, that initial step of just taking the opportunity to say, hey, you know, this is an important topic. It's something that I definitely never thought about when I was growing up that, you know, this is an essential piece of gear that I need to play. Um, and it's just like, frankly, uncomfortable to play a sport if you're not wearing one either. And so I love that Tiggs took that initiative and gave the opportunity for her, her girls team to get involved. And just those small world connections of the soccer community, you know, Tiggs is able to collect this gear in Omaha. And I just happen to be in the same city as well. And because of our work with Football for the World, providing equipment, uh, Sarah connected us and said, hey, Tiggs, meet up with Monica at, you know, Sporting Omaha Center and she'll hand you the gear and then you can take it in that next point of the relay to Kingston, Jamaica. So with Football for the World's work, we've been doing equipment donation drives in Kingston since 2014. And it was just a natural fit for us to make sure that we're incorporating sports bras as part of the donation. And the great thing about sports bras too is that you just know it's going to a women or girls program. And so it's an amazing way to create this support network with the women and girls that receive the equipment. And so this particular drive, you know, Tiggs and I meet up one week, we pack up all the sports bras along with our other equipment and the suitcases and volunteers take them down. We tag all of them. And uh, that, the, that donation is specifically, we passed out 52 sports bras to two different high school girls teams in Kingston, Jamaica. And I always have a different experience when I get to have this part of delivering the equipment because you will get some teams or groups that are super excited and, you know, flinging sports bras around their, the top of their head because they're so excited to have this piece of equipment. Um, and then you also have groups that might be a little bit more reserved about having a sports bra. And so the best thing about it is just always being able to open that door and have the conversation that we're having today, which is really, yeah, it's a sports bra and it's a physical piece of equipment. But when I make that delivery, I'm able to say, this sports bra really represents so much more. This is the network of women and girls and male allies that get it and don't shoo you off the field, but say, hey, we believe in you. We support you. You know, don't let anyone else tell you that you can't play a sport. We're here and you have this powerful network of women from across the world that support you in what you're doing, even if you have, you know, an economic barrier or that cultural barrier that you have to overcome. Thank you, Monica. That I have just one comment before I um, ask a couple questions. Sarah, 4,000 bras, that's a lot of bras. And when did you, when was the um, sports bra project created or established? Um, we sort of informally started in 2017, 18, after going on a bunch of trips, I ended up on a trip to Namibia and we already sent over a shipping container of used soccer equipment and educational supplies and kind of on a whim, there were four of us going over just to kind of be on the ground there as it was getting delivered. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to bring sports bras. I had been in Brazil a couple of years before and had seen that this was, you know, manufactured goods are super expensive. You can get a pedicure for less than you can buy or spend a day at a spa for less than you can get a sports bra or a t-shirt. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to bring some bras. And I got some friends involved who are also coaches who'd also traveled. We're like, you know what, we'll just bring about, I brought about 40 bras, I think that first trip. And I gave them to, there's a wonderful woman named Jackie Gertza who runs the Namibian Football Association's Women's Desk, which is actually two desks when we were there in an old sh converted shower <laughs> or locker room. Um, so I was, and then knew that she did programming in some of the really rural areas. And I was like, you know what, she'll probably just give them to, I, let's see if she has a need. Let's see if those programs in those rural areas need it. And she asked if she could give them to her national team. And I think my jaw just hit the floor. I was like, here we are in the capital city of Namibia. Here you are at the National Federation, National Football Association. And some of your women don't even have access to a sports bra. Um, so on a whim, actually, on the trip, we were spending some time in downtown Windhoek, which is their capital. I was like, here's a sporting goods store. Let me go inside and just see what it's like and how much it costs. And I didn't find a single sports bra. So it's just even when you think it should be accessible, it isn't. So that was kind of the beginning of it. And from that, it, you know, it just grew organically through women who are involved in sports. You know, a lot of us haven't thought about it, but once you say it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so obvious. Um, and from that grassroots piece, we realized it just resonated. It resonates with a young 13 year old girl who's always had access to a sports bra. And um, we actually had a mom email, 
email um, last year donating on behalf of her daughter, who is a 50 year old woman who played soccer three times a week. So it really resonates across all ages and levels. And it's one of those universal pieces that sort of allows us to support and promote some amazing programming like Monica's Football for the World. Um, and that's kind of the beginning of it. I think that's wonderful. Well, and Tig, so how did, how was the reaction from the, your team in getting involved? How did they feel? Because um, obviously it's awesome to give, the, to be the recipient of such a great gift, but what, it's, what is it like to be the person who gives the gift? Yeah, I think they were excited about um, giving it. You can see their happiness in the pictures, I would say. Um, it wasn't, it, when, I, when I brought up that we were doing the drive, you know, there weren't any like teenage rolling of the eyes or anything like that. Like they were like, okay. And, you know, they collectively got their moms together and some of them ordered them on Amazon in packs of three or five. And um, some of them just went to, you know, Target or Walmart and got a whole bunch, but it was kind of cool to see the different types of bras that everybody brought and um, to see their excitement, like, coach, I brought the bras, I brought the bras. So they, you know, they were excited about it, but um, but I think, I think they, you know, realize that it's an important piece of equipment. So they were, they were, um, they were all game to help out a good cause. Nice. And so Monica, then football for the world plays a big part in helping transport. Um, so what, what else, I guess, do you help also with the sports drive and getting the bras together? Um, what else does um, Football for the World, how do they incorporate? Great question. Help? So we do consider the Football for the World office here in Omaha an extension of the sports bra office from New York. Um, so we do have a hand in storing bras that get donated or being part of that supply chain of, hey, there was a bra collection that was done in California. They're going to ship them here and then you're going to take care of, you know, being the next part of the supply chain to its final destination. As a coach of a high school girls team, I use it as an opportunity to talk to them about the project too, and kind of, you know, hopefully motivate them if they ever want to do a drive of their own, that they can organize that and take it on as a leadership project or maybe a project for a class. Um, so those are kind of, you know, I like to use it as motivation if, if other people do want to host a drive. Um, we do store, we're, part, we're the extended office. And then just being really that final piece of delivering the bras or finding other, you know, partner programs that we've worked with donating other soccer gear to say, hey, you know, we've donated to, we'll give a shout out to Gold Haiti. That was a recent shipment that went out. We had given them equipment before and just in a conversation of, hey, what do you need? What does your program need? Because we never want to send equipment that cannot be used or that's not specifically requested. And so their ED said, you know, we really need sports bras for our girls program. And I was like, whoa, have you heard of the sports bra project? Let's get you connected. And so just straight up, if you're in the session and you think, hey, I want to get involved, it just takes reaching out and, and leveraging that network to say, all right, you're this piece of the puzzle and we need every piece. Right. We have a, a comment from one of our listeners here. Um, from, I hope I'm saying this right. Tristram? Um, yeah, it always baffles me that boys were allowed to talk about jock straps in the 70s and 80s, but many uh, male coaches still have issues talking about sports bras. And I think that kind of sums up, you know, we're still, we're still fighting to just get what is normal mm -hmm. for all these uh, girls and women. Um, Here's another question. And um, Sarah, I think this might be for you and Monica. Um, how is the conversation different when you're solicitating support, financial support um, from groups that do have men in them? Um, wow, I guess I'll start with that one. I think we get a range of responses. Uh, I was talking to a, someone a couple of weeks ago and talking about the sports bra project and it was immediate that he understood it. He was like, this makes so much sense to me. Um, and he got the bigger picture that this wasn't just about sports bras. And that's the ideal, I love it. When he, he was the one who actually said to me, this is bigger than sports bras. This is about women in sports. And this is like a bigger movement. I'm like, yes. And he, I didn't even have to say anything. He just got it immediately. That's an awesome conversation. Um, and then you get the guys, one of the first times I was 
uh, working with the club in a high school team in, in New York. And I was talking to them about it before practice. And the coach had arranged for us to have a couple minutes ahead of time to talk about maybe they would do a sports bra drive. And he stood there and he giggled the entire time. And I'm like, you have 15 year old girls, you have a 15 year old daughter, and you're sitting here giggling. They're already uncomfortable with themselves because they're 15 year old kids. We know that's not the most comfortable time in life sometimes. Um, and here he was giggling about it. So to me, that the first guy is the best. Um, that's probably the worst. And the one that we experience a lot that I really love when it happens is we were at, um, I think when Monica and I actually met at the Wisconsin uh, Women in Soccer Symposium, and we had a, had a table there. This is before we'd gotten involved and started working together with it. And we saw some, it was mainly women there that day, but there were some guys around and you could see them kind of circling the tables and the other vendors. And there's this two, two guys probably in their thirties, they walked by a few times and they kind of looked over and they kind of looked over, they didn't stop. And then we presented it and immediately they made a beeline to the table afterwards and says, now we can talk about it. It's a piece of equipment. And yes, we can size it as simply as a t-shirt, small, medium, large and larger. And that was all they needed to know to be able to bring it back to their club and the female coaches and female athletes in their club. So we get a range. I would love to say that the first response was the most common, but I think the last response is the most common. Um, and we do still see, as Tiggs mentioned with her group, where people are so uncomfortable with it. And like, we've just got to normalize it. And this is, you know, it's like ordering a jersey or socks or shorts, you know, just order a sports bra, you know, that's, that's as simple as that. So those are kind of the responses that we see. I don't know, Monica and Nicole, if you saw any different responses or what your experience has been with that. I always know it's a, a testament to the volunteer if it's a gentleman who um, is willing to pack 50 sports bras in the suitcase that he's going to go through customs with. So <laughs> have fun explaining that one. <laughs> Um, but no, definitely there, there's a range still and there's the coaches that say, yep, um, Monica, I need, you know, 15 more sports bras. You know, I have these many, more girls joining my program. It, what do you have in inventory? And the ones that just, it's normalized, it's emphasized. And, um, you know, that's kind of the goal of the, the conversation is to normalize it and feel comfortable with it. And, um, you know, Tiggs is a board member of a, another nonprofit in Omaha that just received sports bras as well. And that one of the coaches of that basketball program said, you know, thank you for making this donation because to Sarah's point, you know, we gave the talk about sports bras and the difference between, you know, wearing a sports bra for sports or having your regular bra and, and how do you differentiate and when do you need, you know, to wear your sports bra. And it just opens that door for that conversation for that male coach to feel comfortable and say, you know, thank you for doing this this is, you know, I'm not always sure how to approach this topic. And so it is part of a really bigger conversation. Uh, you mentioned that you may, you hand deliver the bras. So is that always how um, the bras get to the recipients is hand delivering? Most of the time, yes. It's a little bit of creative shipping um, to ensure that they don't get lost in customs. Uh, most of the time we give bras to organizations that tend to be nonprofits based in the US that then travel abroad and they like Monica's organization and then they carry them with them. Um, they've gone in suitcases, they've gone actually in camera equipment uh, that was going with a cameraman who was doing a documentary with um, Hestia FC, which is a group in Greece that works with refugee women. Uh, so he actually packed them in a box with his camera equipment um, but so they usually get hand delivered it guarantees that they kind of get there and it also guarantees that we know on the ground there's somebody who is comfortable delivering them um, handing them off to organizations where they're like oh yeah we want bras and you know it's a bunch of guys who may not understand it and they may not have women involved on the ground so they may just kind of get put in the back of a closet and forgotten about oh yeah we got the other equipment that's a priority so we know that when they go over um, and are hand delivered that they actually get to where they're going um, we also know that sort of in transit, you know, if sports equipment is given in an organization to girls and boys, it, it may be when it's initially given to both, but later on it kind of migrates over to the boys program and the girls program gets forgotten. We know the sports bras when they're delivered that way, they're going to at least get to the girls and even if they are no longer able to access all of the equipment, they have a sports bra and can go running or go can play with their friends um, individually. So the bulk go that way. Though there are some that we just ship, especially ones in the US, we can just ship them directly to the organization and they can distribute them there. 
Um, that is quite the production. That is <laughs> very, very interesting. Um, I'm going to throw it back to Tiggs and ask for your girls team, why do you think it's important that girls and, and women for that matter do have um, bra uh, drives and what lessons are they learning from it? Yeah, great question. Um, I think for, um, I, I don't wanna say majority, but um, for the club I'm working at, these young girls have access to bras. Um, they're, and I, I can't speak for all of them. Some of them may not have access to them, but um, I think majority of them do. And so for them to have that recognition that um, outside of their world, um, things aren't as easy. I think at a, at, at a young age to bring that to light and, and let them see that, um, that they can be a part of uh, a girl's life across the world to help them do the same thing that they're doing and, and um, participate in a sport that they love, mm -hmm. I think um, is good recognition for them. Um, I haven't spoken with the girls since um since we did the sports bra uh drive so i haven't been able to share the pictures with them but i hope to share the pictures with them and and so that they can see exactly who they um who they donated the the sports bras to but i think it's a it's a good conversation and good lesson for young girls to um have that impact on somebody else and um within the same sport that they're participating in definitely how how can um, people who are interested and in, are in need of getting equipment from football from the world or sports bra from the sports bra project, how can they go about contacting you and what are the necessary procedures to um, go through? I'll start with you, Monica. Okay, I'll start and then I'll, I'll talk <laughs> to Sarah. So um, for us, for football for the world, if you go to our website, we actually have a request um, request equipment form that you can fill out and uh, you know it, you can put anything on there the type of equipment that you are requesting who your organization is you know just tell us a little bit about you and make that introduction um, we also you know you can find us on social media and send us a message and just start engaging in that conversation so that we get to learn about each other and um, you know we we try to make sure that there's a reliable person on the ground to Sarah's point that's going to you know get the gear where it's going um, we prioritize and uh, emphasize and normalize women and girls programs when it comes to, you know, obviously sports bras, but other equipment as well. Because that's part of our, our mission. Um, and so, yeah, just reach out to us and, and start that conversation because we want to get to know who you are and, uh, you know, make sure that we're supporting the work that you're doing. It's very similar for us as well. Uh, there's not a form on the website, but you can send us an email at info at the sportsbraproject.org. You can also reach out through social media. And that's one of the things that I think um, is an incredibly valuable tool right now. And the way some of us connected actually initially, whether it was first connection or second connection, um, social media is uncensored and un gate kept and it's an awesome way to connect organizations especially working in women's sports and I think we could make that entire other panel topic but I think the power of that is sometimes underestimated um, but I can say 10 years ago we could not have done this project so we encourage you to reach out um, through social media reach out through email uh, and then what we do is just kind of get an idea like Monica of what your needs are uh, and if you're interested in doing a drive that's awesome. Our next push is going to be around Girls and Women's Day in Sport. We know sports are a little still up in the air between now and January. So if you want to do a drive between now and then, that's great. But we're going to do a push in February around National Girls and Women's Day in Sport. And we welcome any team. It can be a small team where it's, you know, a U14 girls team where they each donate one bra. That's a great drive. Or if you want to get an entire, we've had entire athletic departments where their SAC committee, which is the Student Athlete Advisory Committee through the NCAA, um, got involved. So we had some football players collecting sports bras at Marist College last year, which was great. Uh, so it, we, the drives don't all have to look the same. Um, they can right. be simple. They can be elaborate. Just reach out, let us know what you're thinking, and we'll help promote you. Because part of the other side of what we do is we really want to amplify the voices of the groups that are involved and amplify, you know, what is your club doing? And is this something unique? Can we help grow your base? Can you help us grow? But can we, you know, celebrate what your program is doing? Are you working with a population that we 
don't talk about very often and want to sort of amplify that they're involved in sports. Uh, I think for us, the wheelchair basketball team in Illinois is one of those amazing program, absolutely amazing program, but nobody really talks about it. I didn't even know there was college wheelchair basketball until we, we connected. Um, and so being able to sort of get their message out and what they're doing out is, is the other piece of it. So do reach out and we'll help get you get on the right track for it. We have a little link that we'll send out with some guidelines for drives. There's some basic guidelines. All the bras are new. Um, any size, any brand is welcomed. Um, we emphasize medium to high impact, um, preferably not the yoga strappy bras. Some of them come in and I'm like, I'm not sure how that works. But um, other than that, really any size, any brand is welcomed so long as they're new. And that's, that's the simplest form. Okay. Um, do you have any companies right now that, you, that are, you're in partnership with or trying to get partnerships with? And, and how do you get funding? I know that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> and Monica just turned off her speaker. Thanks. Um, <laughs> yes. I wanted um, to make sure you had the floor for this one. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, working on funding. We got our nonprofit status last February. We were all set to ramp everything up. And then of course, two weeks later, the world shut down. So we're in the process of that. Our funding right now comes through donations. You can donate on our website. Uh, you can also purchase off of our Amazon wish list on um, through Amazon and as well as Amazon Smiles. And I think for Monica's program, she has those two things available as well for Football for the World. So if you actually are not in an area for a drive, but want to contribute a, a tangible bra, you can purchase off of that wish list and they'll get sent to us. Um, funding wise, we have, are lucky enough to have an, um, Sam Lewis, uh, who writes for The Guardian, put an article together in July, which really kind of generated a lot of interest for us and some donations through that. So right now we're in the process of looking at funding for next year um, and kind of ramping that up in 2021. So if you're interested in getting involved in that end, by all means, reach out, um, <laughs> whether it's on a small scale or a small uh, or a large scale. Um, but, you know, as I said, we welcome single bra donations. Sometimes I'll, I'll get a single package in where they bought one bra off of Amazon. And that's great. That just gets put in with other ones. Um, and if you're looking to be more involved in that, then we obviously welcome that as well. Okay. Monica, do you have anything to add? Um, other funding opportunities that Football for the World has and Want to share. Right, right, sure. Um, we do uh, have a majority of our funding comes from private foundations along with individual donations. One of my favorite individual fundraisers that people do is just hosting a watch party for any, you know, mm -hmm. soccer event that it is. And so, you know, then they might put a couple raffle prizes together. You're watching the game at a friend's house or maybe you're watching it virtually now, but then, you know, people might sell raffle prizes or put something together. So, I think there's a lot of unique ways that, you know, individuals or groups of women, groups of men, whoever wants to get involved can be creative in how they support, you know, any of our missions. And so it can be a, a small individual fundraiser. You can sell cookies for all like, you know, like everything helps progress the game forward. So have your bake sale, you know, use it as a school project um throw a, a a rager for us and and you know talk about and start the conversation and you can make that financial ask um as well we have so, someone get in the creative audience. yes right <laughs> we have someone in the audience that is kind of going along with that have you ever ha done competitions like who's their drive is gained the most sports bras or other equipment um and would that help yeah. We, we haven't had a team do a competition. We've had one, um, a volleyball program in uh, Missouri actually did a drive in conjunction with one of their rivalry games. So they actually worked together to do it. So it wasn't, I don't, I don't think they didn't tell me they competed for who collected the most, but they did it around a rivalry game. Uh, the same thing for the everything's field. a competition, Sarah. Well, yes, everything. I know. Yeah. We're working with athletes here. This is true. So we welcome competitions. If you want to set one up as who can collect the most, absolutely, we're on board with that. Um, I think a, so, uh, there's a field hockey conference that got involved in it, and I think they started out kind of wanting to compete with it. Um, some schools got more involved than others, but absolutely, we can certainly do a competition. As Monica said, be creative with it, just like our drives, you know, whatever meets your demographic um, is, or your population, are they interested in a, as you said, a rager? I'm not sure I can go with that one, but um, <laughs> a running- Post-COVID rager. A what? 
post COVID rager. Yes, there we go. All right, that sounds good. A safe distance, a socially distanced one, or a run. Um, it's just kind of we want this to be relevant to the groups involved, um, and so finding something that's relevant to the group that you're getting involved, whether it's a corporate group. Uh, I think we had a corporate group that did a a run, and they donated funds to different organizations based on that. So all that involvement is good. Great. Well, when we're looking at the big picture of everything, why is it so important to make this a normalization for girls and women in sports? Why, you know, the importance of their needs and their wants for the game? Why is it so important? I'll start with you, Sarah, since you're on my screen bigger right now. <laughs> <laughs> Monica's taller. Um, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Um, why is it so important? I think... It's, that's a big picture question is, we're still justifying girls and women in sport. We're still making sure we're, you know, if, if you let me play, the old Nike campaign was beautiful in the 90s, but it was still justifying women's involvement. And I think where we are now, we need to get past that. We're almost 50 years out of Title IX. We need to say women can be involved in sports because they want to be and leave it as simple as that. And so if this can help bring that conversation forward um, and normalize, a lot of times we look at organizations and if you wanna ask the question, why aren't there sports bras? Well, if the people ordering equipment and people on the board are all male, the likelihood they're going to order sports bras is pretty small. But if we start flipping that and making it more women involved in those decision making roles, more women involved in that leadership structure, um, and having that kind of immediate impact, well, I guess, you know, if there's a room full of 12 women, I have a pretty good idea that the, when you ordered your uniforms, you're going to be ordering bras with them. So I think for us, the bigger picture is really normalizing women in all aspects of sports, using the sports bra to increase access to sports, but then using that as a starting point for that conversation. Um, and then also really, there's an amazing network out there that I am so jealous of. Like, I wish I was a 13 year old girl now instead of in the eighties when you didn't have those opportunities to play yeah. and seeing the organizations that are getting on board and backing it um, is, has been amazing to me and the power of social media to, co to connect those organizations and not have to go through gatekeepers, not have to go through the senior leadership, which tends to be male, to connect with the other senior leadership to then get down to the woman who's actually on the ground doing something. You can bypass all of that now. And to me, that's been the most powerful thing. And COVID certainly has impacted the populations that we work with a lot and more significantly. And there's a lot of talk about how women and girls have been disproportionately impacted around the globe and what that's going to look like moving forward. But that said, I think because everybody's moved online to some extent, there's now a larger conversation going on because people have time for it and it's a format that they're in. Um, so to me, that's exciting. Cautiously optimistic that maybe we're moving forward. Organizations like Women in Soccer, um, there's We Coach out there, which tends to be college focused. There's some similar organizations in, in other countries as well and getting them all together to do their own thing, but to kind of collaborate and be able to connect. That's, that's where I see this moving and that's what we're hoping to, to move forward and connections like with Monica and Nicole, each of us have our own circles, but they overlap and being able to sort of tie into them um, and using you know, social media and that we can connect. I can have a conversation with someone in Australia if I get up really early or go to bed really late. Um, that's the only requirement now. Then we can start to plan things, which just putting that in the back of people's minds, we are looking at Australia for, for a few, few okay. things moving forward. Oh, Women's World Cup. We can have a Women's World Soccer Summit. Um, definitely. That's, that's where the rager is going to happen. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would love that. So, so Tiggs, with, with your, your team, it sounds like you brought them in to, for the sports um, broad drive. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do you think you can do to help you know, or what else can the soccer community, the women's soccer community do to make sure that our girls, you know, do understand it and we do make it normal for them to think. It's, they're just players. They're not girl players or boy players. They're just players. And we need to help everyone with their equipment. Yeah, I think um, just to go off of what Sarah and Monica have already said, just continue the conversation and use your network to um, find those opportunities to help out wherever you can. I think um, the biggest part of connecting with Sarah and Monica has been 
um, like Sarah said, we have overlapping networks. So, um, you know, if there's another organization that um, somebody else knows of, just using those connections and connecting those opportunities with young women that can help other women in, you know, in neighboring towns or neighboring countries or countries across the world, I think just planting that seed that there is need out there um, and that some of us live in kind of a privileged world that we have the opportunity to provide need to those um, communities. Yeah, that's great. Um, Monica, with um, Football for the World, there, there are a lot of nonprofits out there um, and there's more every day in soccer. What differentiates yeah. Football for the World? Um, you know, Football for the World, we're an Omaha-based program. We're one of the few programs in Omaha that provides free affordable programming to kids that are specifically focused on that cohort that can't afford the pay-to-play model that exists. And we're hyper-focused on getting girls in the game. And so, you know, I think we have a lot to learn and that's what's so great about the network is just this connection of, you know, best practices from America scores and how can we make sure we're implementing that into our curriculum to help kids in Omaha, Nebraska. And then how do we continue to form those strong relationships with our programs all across the world? Because while there are, yes, a lot of us doing great sport for, for, for development work, um, you know, I don't think that that's, that's a problem. The more people providing this and trying to move that needle and ensuring that, you know, people and, and kids aren't priced out of it or that they're excluded from it because of, you know, where they were born or their race or their gender, um, you know, that's, that's okay that there are more of us working in this space each and every day. So continue to learn from each other is, is kind of my advice. And I know we've harped on it a lot. We say, use the network, reach out to people. And for uh, people with personalities like Sarah and Tiggs and myself, that's not an intimidating thing to do. Um, so I just want to, you know, for anyone who's in this call that's like, well, how do you, you want me to email Sarah? She's the founder of the Sports Bra Project. Like, trust me, she won't bite. And I, I think anyone that's at the table today and anyone that's, you know, going to join the Women in Soccer Network, that's what it's here to do. And we're all really passionate about that. So, you know, try and, and reach out and um if you don't hear back right away just email us again because it, it's not personal for sure so we're all here to help each other and, and move this forward because it takes individuals it takes the nicole to monica handoff of sports bras to it takes little steps but all of us are part of this bigger path moving forward definitely well said so well, th this summit is bringing together, you know, women and girls and working together. And it's, we have top leaders like yourselves. Um, what do you want personally? And what would you like this, to see the soccer community do in the next five to 10 years um, to help each other? And where do you see us? Uh, I'll start with you, Tix. Let's go there. Uh, sorry, it's a loaded question, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um. For me personally, I want to see more women, women of color um, in boardrooms and um, decision-making places within the soccer community. Um, that's a goal of mine and um, have a few projects working on that, but also um, more kids of color playing soccer at a higher level um, and having access all the way through. I think there's, you know, some free options and then it kind of stops and organizations like Football for the World um, are one that helps that. And obviously uh, the Sports Broad Project um, helps along with that as well to continue that access. So that's my, my goal the next five to 10 years, see some female owners of teams and, um, and in boardrooms. I, I should add on that question. Do you have any, um, I guess, action items or anything anyone who's in the audience can do to help realize any of the goals or, um, you know, what you envision in the future? Um, yeah, I, I would say use your network and reach your hand out to, if you have that access, reach your hand out and invite people in that don't look like you um, to, to those boardrooms and those, those meetings, because you'll get a ton of different ideas that you haven't already received so great and I, I 
lastly would like to uh, thank Sarah and Monica for inviting me to this, this platform because I wouldn't have been on it without them. So appreciate that. Well, we're glad they did and we're glad you're here too. So uh, Monica, I'll go to you next. Yeah, I, I too would like to see more women and girls of color in leadership positions and more um, kids of color playing soccer as well. Um, and, and really just across the board, you know, that conversation of, I want to see the phrases, oh, you play like a girl out the window. I think, again, everyone here gets that, but how do we reach the broader community and, and the broader general society so that you know, there aren't these negative words on social media when a girl wants to punt for a football team. And, you know, when can female broadcasters stop getting criticized for being a woman and, and have that double scrutiny? So um, just a, a world that's definitely more inclusive and, and extending that beyond just the soccer community or the sports community, getting that to the general community. Another big just passion area for me and personal goals are just creating more um, playing fields that are accessible to kids and in communities in the urban center so that, um, you know, there, there's greater access at the end of the day. Lovely. And Sarah, same question to you. Yeah, I'm going to start pretty much a similar spot to both Monica and Nicole. I think one of the reasons we're having these conversations is because the leadership doesn't look like it's membership in the groups that they're catering to. And I'd like to see that change. Um, both in all aspects of it, um, to get people involved in the governance and the leadership of, of sports in general that look like those that are participating or all of those that are participating, not just some of those. Uh, I think the, the danger of othering so many people when they're not represented in leadership is why we have to have these conversations. Um, so I would like to say we've seen progress and I wanna see that go forward, but I'm no longer as patient as I was saying, oh, it'll take time. Um, let's get this going a little bit faster. <laughs> um, let's rock it a little bit more. Let's rock the boat a little bit more to get things moving forward. And if that means some of us need to kind of step out on a limb a little uncomfortably, then do it. Um, as Monica said, please reach out. Uh, you know, that's, we're not inaccessible. Um, and to me, you know, it took someone introducing Monica and I to start having these conversations. Um, sometimes you don't get to have that introduction. I, I've connected with people who've had huge impacts on the sports bra project who've reached out on social media and just messaged. And then if that starts a conversation. So I would love to see more of that happening. Um, and if that means I can provide an introduction to somebody, uh, to someone else that'll further it, that's really what this network is. Um, and as Monica said, I think there's not, um, it's okay that there's more groups doing similar things um, because we can't do it all ourselves. Like we're not gonna address every need around the world, but can we support some of those groups that are with something as simple as a sports bra? Um, and I think every organization, if they can step up and do their piece of it, that will help move that needle forward and that conversation forward. So I wanna see this momentum continue um, after COVID and I'd like to see it even bigger. Um, and for people getting involved, by all means, as I said, reach out. Uh, we'd love to have people involved in the sports bra project. If there's a way we can help you, if there's a way you wanna get involved and help us, that's great. Um, and yeah. Well, we will definitely make sure all of your social media handles, your, your website is available to anyone who is in the audience now and um, looks at uh, the platform for the web or for the summit. Um, we definitely wanna help get the word out because both of your organizations are doing such great work. And Nicole, it's been great to have you bring in a team on the other end to show how it actually benefits people who are doing the drive. And it's, um, I think it's really a special thing to help someone, especially those um, less fortunate and bringing the game of soccer to everyone and making it a little bit more equal. Um, and that's, Kind of what we're hoping with this summit to bring everyone together and to help each other and I really appreciate all of you taking the time to um, give us a little bit more information about how we can help and what you are doing to help. Um, I also like to thank um, goal five who is going to give someone in the audience a lucky member a giveaway and I would love to thank women in sport or God, women in soccer. Um, they've been doing great um, work in getting collaborations and connections. And they have their launch party today at one o'clock. We're going to be streaming it. And you can also sign up on their website, womeninsoccer.org. 
And um, yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm just so excited and proud to be part of this and learn so much from all the you great soccer leaders. And hopefully you'll come back at some point and um, definitely we wanna get some drives going. And um, if there's any last questions, um, I can take them right now. If not, I'd like to thank you all three of you for spending um, a little bit of time with us and teaching us a little bit more and um, have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so thank much. You so for the much. Opportunity. It's thank great to get you. together and share this. So thank you so much, Alicia. The work you've done and America Scores has done is great and covering so many areas and aspects of the game is tremendous. So, well, thank, thank you, you so much. Hey guys, I'm, I know I'm coming in from like my picture's not there, but stay tuned definitely for our next session, which is the Women in Soccer launch party. So make sure to attend at one o'clock. Woo, this is where we come together. <laughs> Thanks, Ange. Mm -hmm. Have a nice day, everybody. <laughs>